Hi, it's Steve. In this video, we'll explore some of the reasons why your microwave may not be heating food. We'll look at some of the components that may cause that symptom, where they're located, what their function is, and we'll also show you how to troubleshoot them. Now, one of the most common causes for a microwave not to heat is related to the door interlock switches. These switches are located inside of the control housing and they're used to prevent the microwave from operating when the door is open. They're actuated by the two hooks on the edge of the door and they fit into these slots and trip the individual switches. To test them, you'll need to remove the cabinet and the control panel and then using a multimeter, we can check them for continuity and or adjustment. You'll see the switches attached to the side of this mounting bracket and there will typically be three or more switches, one or more interlock switches, and then a monitor switch. The action of opening the door is what is used to actuate those switches. And we can see that one is not quite making full contact. There are typically two screws that will secure that mounting bracket for the switches to the cabinet frame and there will be some back and forth movement available. So we'll just tighten that up and now we see that that switch is fully activated. Another common cause of a low heat situation with your microwave would be related to the control board. The function of the control board is to supply power to the high voltage circuit which consists of a high voltage transformer and a magnetron and they are what produces the microwave energy in your microwave. If the control board fails to supply power to that high voltage circuit, you won't get any heat. To check the control board, you'll need to remove the cabinet and the control board and then we'll look for any signs of arcing or burning or poor connections to that board that may cause that symptom. This is a typical control board the touchpad buttons on the front and the control board behind. There's a ribbon type connector. You can disconnect that. Check these connections for any signs of corrosion. For the control board itself, we'll look for signs of arcing or burn marks on the board that would indicate it is defective. If you look at the foil side, look for any signs of burning or foil that has burned off. In that case, it would need to be replaced. Also check the relays. If there are signs of arcing or carbon marks around there, that would indicate that the board needs to be replaced. Often the board will be in more than one piece, as in this case, there are two separate control boards. Power outlet portion of the board and the actual controls that have the software in it. Again, look for signs of any arcing or burning, and if so, they'll need to be replaced. Now another section of the microwave that may cause a no heat situation is the high voltage circuit. A high voltage circuit consists of a transformer, a magnetron, a diode, and a capacitor. If either of those components is failed, you will not have microwave energy and therefore no heat in your microwave. To access those components, you'll need to remove the cabinet, and then we can check for continuity on those components with a multimeter. Now the few components that we can check in that high voltage circuit would be the high voltage capacitor, a high voltage diode, and the magnetron. We'll begin with the capacitor. We obviously want to make sure that we've disconnected power to the appliance and let it sit for a few minutes so that that capacitor can discharge. We'll then pull one of the leads off of that capacitor and then with our meter set to a high scale, we'll measure across those two terminals. We should see some deflection on that meter and then it should go back to basically an open circuit or a high resistance circuit. Reversing the leads should give the same condition. If the meter read 
a shorted condition when measuring across these terminals, we would conclude that the capacitor is defective. Or if it did not deflect at all, again, we would suspect that that capacitor was bad. The next component we're going to check is that high voltage diode. Look for any signs of blistering or overheating or arcing. And if so, we can assume it's defective. To do a continuity check on it, the diode is polarity sensitive. So depending on how we orientate the meter leads, we will get a different reading. One end of the diode is connected to ground so we can put one of the meter leads right to the cabinet and then the second lead onto the top of that diode. We see no deflection. Reverse those meter leads and there should be some deflection or relatively high resistance but not open circuit. If we have a reading that was closed with zero ohms across that diode, regardless of the direction of the meter leads, that would indicate that the diode is shorted. If we show open circuit, regardless of the positioning of the leads across that diode, we would conclude that it is open circuit and again defective. The last component that we'll check is the filament of the magnetron. We simply pull that plug off the end of it. Now for this test, we're going to measure between these two terminals. We'll have our meter set to a lower resistance scale and we should be looking for somewhere around two or three ohms, or close to zero ohms in either direction. That would indicate that the filament of the magnetron is fine. We'll also want to check between either terminal and ground for the case of that magnetron. There should be no continuity in that direction. And that concludes our test of the high voltage circuit. Need help with anything else around your home? Search our channel for thousands of helpful videos that will walk you through your home repairs. For more information or the parts needed for these repairs, don't forget to check out PartSelect.com. Thank you so much for watching and remember to subscribe so you won't miss a thing.